You awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders hideaway. Oh my god, I fell asleep here. Ew. I'm still thinking about the coleslaw. Gross. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to the Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. In some jurisdictions, isn't even legal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. This would make me mad. Like, I could live with the biscuits, okay? Maybe. But I, I know how KFC biscuits are, and they're not much better than Popeyes. <clears throat> um, but just randomly fucking fried chicken right when you wake up? No, gross. I like fried chicken as much as the next guy, but right when you wake up? Mm, no. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting uh, to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? Probably. How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Don't be rude to me. Peg the Colonel. Such confidence, such grace. Could it? Uh, could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Yeah, we'll flatter him. I guess we shouldn't peg the Colonel. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner, could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school, and after all, the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where the fuck have you been? I have been pegging the colonel. Because I had one heck of a night. Yeah? I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something happened to you. It's okay, I was just. But now that it turns out you're fine, I can totally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date! I think I can believe that. Since I'd been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Aww. Of course I told him you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, I opened up his oven and went to town. Long story short, he took me sky to skydiving mm -hmm. but things quickly spiral out of control because it doesn't know how to use a parachute did she just say skydiving as a that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker and now i'm not really sure where we stand you don't give miriam time to tell her whole story however bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear and i went on a date too back uh, to colonel sanders house where i spent the night with him <gasps> you what nothing happened but the emotional connection wowzers Miriam tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. She told me fucking what now? If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. <gasps> oh no. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. Get fucked, both of you. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp the fact. Because, you know... He's pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. <laughs> oh, it's great. I'll order you one up right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Aww. You can get your swirly dipped too. <laughs> Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person at school. Ban ban. <laughs> There's that horse the Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Shut up, you know, the little Ashley. You've got some nerve, Private Sanders, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but with the injury from yesterday's mixer accident, makes you wince with pain. Fuck. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever. 
Colonel Sanders arrives, just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something's been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of schools? Private Sanders. Uh, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. You're fucking right I will be. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Ashley. Ashley. Hey, little Ashley. The links that I will go to to make you feel fucking as hellish as possible and the fucking drive to want to die is unfucking ending. I will make you beg, beg me to destroy you. I will have you drooling at the idea of me putting a fucking anything like a knife, maybe even a fucking razor blade in your fucking mouth if you talk to Colonel Sanders again. Yeah. Yeah, I will drown you in your own fucking blood, you hear me? Yeah. I will cut your fucking legs off. And I will send them to your friend. Van Van? Yeah, he already seems to want your legs. And I will send him your legs. Anywho. <clears throat> Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing? Complimenting her? But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? Get... <laughs> it was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Yeah, get fucking wrecked, bitch. Excuse me, Private Sanders. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. Oh, Colonel. Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Private Sanders. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see uh, Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distra distract yourself from how slighted you feel by that interaction with uh, Ashley, you take out the spellbook you recovered from yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's that book! It looks like bad news. It's just something I found laying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in the magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful. I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open a page covered with arcane warnings. Cast only in case of extreme emergency, says around the edges of the page. <clears throat> I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. That's way too drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger. <laughs> okay, fine, it is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you, and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Uh, nope. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Yeah, there's no fucking way I'm using the weird magic book. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry, reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. Sprinkles stops in his tracks. He focuses in on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Oh... Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence, I told you never to come back here. Terrence, I will destroy you, Terrence. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. Squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? <laughs> you better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has, presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. Ahem. I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Private Sanders, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom, you see? But before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it after class, or save it for after class. Bzz, bzz, dude. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appeared to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. 
Whirr. But no, you had to show off to your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joan. Okay. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well, that doesn't make it a great date. Beep whirr. Uh. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Fuck Miriam, I like her. Uh, sad beep. Clank begins to sh uh, shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Beep bzz. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that clank. Clank burps out a completely deep-fried sneaker, <laughs> considering that he himself has wheels, not feet. It's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep-fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition. Showdown challenge exam. I'm still working on the title, uh, title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Okay, I'm so mad I can smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets, uh, droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. Ah, well, silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you. We're going to cruise through final test and hit the carpool lane to success city. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel San uh, Sander... Mm. Now that you mention it, though... <laughs> of course not. Well, maybe sort of, but... <laughs> God damn it. This character is just me. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it. And a ranch big enough for the both of us and whoever else we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. <laughs> I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. Nice. And I bet the Professor Dog is going to love it up. <laughs> While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice the dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage. A test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off of... <laughs> okay. Beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his evil-er... Counterpart, hey, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on, Private Sanders' famous, famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven, but as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Private Sanders, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around mm. you. Visualing, huh? Visual as I... <laughs> Don't mind me while I just stronk out right quick. Visualizing, huh? <laughs> That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily... Share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Ignore it like there was no sound at all. I'd like to not burn my dish. Yeah, you know, let's not burn my dish. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing 
I know, my nose can smell a Popeye from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You know it was a Popeye just from the smell? Not just a Popeye, but a chicken Popeye with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Haha, <laughs> no, I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. Yeah. Fucking tonic liquor and cocaine. <laughs> uh, but it'll probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lay down, lays down the ground rules, so they all just popped in while the pot pie was going on. Ah, that's cool. There are no rules. That's it, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that the mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge of uh, edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top uh, selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend batter, bat bastard, blaster. Okay. Van Van flexes pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Oh yeah? Ashley scoops her pastries off a tray with lightning speed while she dies off in the corner. Dies. Shallow personality spatula! <laughs> Even Clank gets on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Which he said in English. Oh, okay. <laughs> See? Just keeps going. It's the singularity, as was foretold. Van mustn't let it happen, or the appliance uprising will take us all. self destru Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice A.A. Ashley has her spellbook out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? <laughs> You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with the magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? No. Do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm gonna do it the hard way. I'm gonna do it with a hard on. Colonel Sanders sees that you've got a hard on and chose to win your own way. And he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Private Sanders. Miriam notices too. And I've always believed in you, Private Sanders, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. Damn right, Miriam. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who is cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but... Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. It's the secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know they... Oh, fuck. God damn it. God damn it. I deserve this. <laughs> I deserve this eye of newt in my dish. And where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, <laughs> bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve! <laughs> the Spork Monster! Steve? Wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off, but you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle. So I'd say you're doing pretty alright. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but you're kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, the spork monster, notices that you've got uh, the grimoire stashed beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? 
Haha, <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef. Actually, you know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country, you can feel Spark Monster winding up to tell you a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like they were probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should just watch from the stands. I really need to focus on the competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in Monster School that I had fallen asleep during Scare Tactics class, and when I woke up, you toss a serious stare at Steve, and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Nice. I met Steve. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. <clears throat> Oh yeah, you summon extra power from deep down within yourself. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange. <laughs> Fantastic, I've gone super culinary sin. As culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure, my hands are steady, my taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Private Sanders, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you'd been summoning immediately fades back out. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands steady. My taste buds have been preparing for their entire lives. For this moment, I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your entire body. You know that with this power, I can... I mean, you can do anything. Uh -huh. Except turn back time. Which would be super useful because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. Shit. But don't worry, dear Private Sanders. You may have suffered setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you've earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help! With my rod? Hmm. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up. So you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never been my thing. I follow my heart. There is no rules. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have a surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting? If we combine forces, we can perform or uh, form the perfect food union. Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now pre uh, prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop, clank. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Pop, hee hee, I'm flying. It sounds like it's coming from the broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. <laughs> Stupid. I love Pop. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing as how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You, ki uh, you kids and your pranks, I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not uh, exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks? Pranks? Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature whir beep or uh, other onomatopoeia, but there's nothing. Somehow, he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect, uh, collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles in savory soup. Aw, that looks adorable. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny uh, Naruto Maki I spy afloat in this itsy bitsy bowl? Yes, yeah, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Okay. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anybody else like to taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it by myself. 
and in a flash the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took that much, it was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A+. Plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Private Sanders, for helping me believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made uni over a smooth egg custard in an axe-hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. That just looks interesting. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second, different colored type of urchin? Yes, sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit uh, much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uh, uni, but he can't get his nose close on, a, on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof woof. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Grr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. He ouch my tongue. The professor appears to ha uh, be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. <laughs> Disqualified. A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles could make it difficult to eat? <laughs> not I. Dejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount sympathy. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before uh, forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously wraps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes that helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student. Hey, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with wrench meringue and connected by sugar glass. That looks interesting but how is this doing a thing i don't get it anyhow that actually doesn't sound too bad indeed it's quite delightful however i'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way it's very fragile and meant to be on a display piece don't eat the food at a cooking school got Toast in your ears or something, Private Sanders? I told you, it's a display piece. Hey, Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did, some, and did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an extra or an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to College of Eating School for the Hungry. <gasps> I suppose you could smell it if you're absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes A.I. Ashley, and she finally cannot keep her uh, keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. <gasps> and with that, A.I. Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sander Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? <gasps> what began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has begun, uh, be become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this... this thing? And completely blow me away in my 49 dog years of life? I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, even that Van Van and A. Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. <sighs> Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? 
Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of a school's graduation dance. Yeah! Compared to this massive high-tech school uh, cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. Ah, uh, but the cooking battles are awesome. Yeah! DJ Dog in the ass. Ah, uh, woo! You know that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were villains. Oh yeah? Okay. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. <gasps> no ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh yeah? Oh, music. And now that everyone is together, it's the Spork Monster. He is totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here on out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Where's Steve, though? Students try to finish what he had to say. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up by talking to Spork. Sorry, Party Monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know she's gonna do great. Yeah! A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop! He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see, perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop! I know you weren't able to compete, uh, complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school, school's dean. Oh, shit. Oh, now I get it. And uh, We get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. Oh, okay. The music of the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank who has arrived late to the school dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? <gasps> what? I actually feel like I knew it this whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she's managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Oh my god. Ugh. Just like the first day you met him, he has came prepared. He has come prepared. He has came. You come. You come and, and you, Colonel, come. Colonel, come, Sanders. Prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. Oh my god. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? What? No! This can't be the end. No. No. What about my smooch? No, it's not the end. Okay. Woo! As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Private Sanders. I couldn't help but wonder. Was our final exam team up purely an act of strategy carried, about, carried out by two cunning chefs? Or was it something more? I'm afraid I can't answer that question directly. Instead, I'd like to ask you a question of my own. May I have this dozy do? Colonel Sanders extends his hand to you, and you feel a surge of energy jump off the tips of your fingers. Big ol' bzzz bzzz. His hand, the hand of a master chef. So dedicated to the craft of fine cookery. So tender yet refined. So milky smooth. Fingers like finely battered drumsticks turned in flour. Soaked in buttermilk and dusted with exotic spices. But they do not reach for tongs, a knife, or even a spork. Tonight they reach... 
for you. And though our feet may tire of dancing, I do believe that this is just the beginning of our steps together. Colonel Sanders, I... Will you not only join me on the dance floor, but in the kitchen, as my co-chef and partner, in both business and in life? You gasp. Could it be? Is he really saying? Me and you? <gasps> Together? Ever since I met you, my dreams have changed. It's not enough to simply open up the world's greatest chain of chicken fried restaurants. No, even then my life would be incomplete without you by my side. So what do you say, partner? I already pegged him in his house. Come on, Carlito. No, it's whatever. He probably shot his family too. I say, I love you, Colonel Sanders. I love you. The end.